These are my top five tips to becoming a game developer. Hi, my name is Quasi and I'm the creator of Shotgun Farmers, the multiplayer shooter where you grow your guns. I was crazy enough to quit my job to pursue making video games for a living. And today I'm lucky enough to not only work for myself, but also be able to hire an awesome team to work with me. I wanted to share a few pieces of advice that I wish I had when I started on this crazy journey to become a game developer. Tip number one, don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. When I first started out coding, a lot of more hardcore developers told me that I wasn't a true programmer unless I coded my own game engine from scratch, rendered my own polygons from scratch, really just did anything from scratch. But the truth is, I don't care about being a real programmer. My goal has always been to make video games. And to do that, I didn't have to be the greatest programmer in the world. Now, there are plenty of great programmers who also go on to make great video games. But if your goal really is to become a video game developer, then don't feel like you have to also become the greatest programmer in the world because it's only gonna hold you back from actually making and finishing your video games. For me, making video games meant just being an okay enough programmer to make it happen, to not have to write my own tools or create my own engine, but rather spend that precious time of which we only have so much to make the game that I wanted to make and actually get it done. On the concept of time, even AAA studios are using game engines now to further their progress and spend less time rebuilding what's already been made. Now I've mentioned game engines a bunch and that takes me to tip number two, which is the tools don't matter. Unity, Unreal, Game Maker, Godot, Python, Rocks, whatever you use to make your games, it doesn't matter as long as you get the game done Great games have been made in almost every engine and tool and coding language there is. So don't let other people tell, boop, boop, boop. Cuphead, Shovel Knight, Hyperlight Drifter, Binding of Isaac, they're all made in varying tools, varying languages, varying game engines, and yet they were all great games in the end. And no one who plays them or buys them asks, hmm, what was this made in? Ah, uh, yeah, that engine, yeah, I'm not gonna play it. What really matters in the end is how the game plays and how the game feels. All right, tip number three. Now you've probably heard this one a bunch before, but if you haven't, I need you to put down what you're doing and just listen to me. And this is, you're, you're not gonna wanna listen to me. What I'm about to say is gonna make you be like, you know what, screw this guy. I'm still gonna do the thing I wanted to do. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Everyone doesn't know what they're talking about. I'm just gonna do my thing. You have to start small. Trust me, wait, before you close the video, before you leave, when I started making video games, my dream, probably like many of you out there, was also to make a massive online game, and MMO specifically, of course, an RPG with levels and items and equipments and monsters and dungeons and guilds and, 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 and all the things. I still wanna make that game, don't get me wrong. I haven't given up on that dream, but a lot of people either fail or quit or get discouraged, discouraged? Discouraged early on because making video games is hard. It's really, really, really hard. Making a tiny video game is hard. Making a medium-sized video game is hard. Making a giant video game is, is really, really hard. It's all hard. No matter how small of a video game you try to make, actually polishing it and getting it to the final stages, getting it out there, marketing it, selling it, releasing it, it's difficult. And the bigger your game idea is, the harder the entire process becomes whether it's how long it's gonna take, how much money it's gonna to cost to make it, even if you're making it all yourself, which is why I think it's so, so, so important for your first project, your first game, your first even maybe commercial release to be smaller than whatever you're thinking of right now. Take that game idea in your head, cut it in half, cut it in half again, cut it in half one more time, and it's probably still too big. If you really think about it and lay it all out, if it's not just tic-tac-toe, it's probably still too big. So when you're starting out, just pick a small project, start it, and get it all the way to completion. I'm talking menus, sound volume settings, credit screen, a quit button, uh, all the things you need to actually just hand this game over to someone else, not have to tell them like, oh yeah, you know, you got Alt F4 to close the game. Just be able to give them a build, let them play it, and feel like you finally completed something. Because that feeling of finishing a game, whether it be a, a game jam game, or just a small project, or your first commercial release, will snowball you to continue leveling up to actually make bigger and bigger games. When I first started out, I had that one dream game I really, really wanted to make. It was an open world RPG, and I felt like that was the only thing I could make. And if I had actually pursued that, if I had figured I can't make anything else but this one thing, this has to be it, if I was actually that stubborn about my dream game idea, I never would have made Shotgun Farmers, which has not only been my most successful game I've ever made, but also a project I've had an insane amount of fun and joy and happiness for making. It's because of that game that I was able to grow this studio, able to hire so many people to work on the game, and now create the amount of resources we might need to make a bigger game in the future. But I never would have found Shotgun Farmers, I never would have thought of it if I was just so stubborn about my dream game idea and insisted that I have to make 
an open world RPG first, or I have to make an MMO first. All right, tip number four, give yourself a deadline. Now I myself am also really, really awful with deadlines. I procrastinate every project I ever did in school. I procrastinate everything I have to do in regular life. And if anything, the Shotgun Farmers release schedule shows is that I'm also very, very bad with deadlines. But deadlines are so, so, so important. If you're not already familiar with Parkinson's Law, it says work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. Which means if you give yourself six months to make a game or a year to make a game or an infinite amount of time to make a game, it'll probably take you an infinite amount of time to finish that game. How many unfinished projects are sitting on your desktop right now? Now imagine telling yourself, this game has to get done by X week or X month. I was really, really bad with deadlines when I started out. I'm still really bad with deadlines. And what I did to really try to force myself to finish things was I entered in one game a month where your goal was to make and finish a game in one month. And after that month, that was it. You stopped. You had to finish everything you could for that game in that one month. And then you had to you had to stop working on it because it's so easy to just keep working on something for over and over and over and over to remaking the systems, remaking the character controller, remaking the camera system, remaking the monster AI and just continuously toiling at it and never actually getting any further with it. And if your goal is to finish that game, then giving it a deadline will actually force you to try to figure out what things can you do in that time frame. Now, one game a month was cool because the goal was to have a finished game by the end. And that finished game was very, 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 very tiny, like one level or like one mechanic or whatever. It allowed me to start feeling this level, this this sense of uh, of completion or this sense of like success where I could just send someone a zip file of my game, be like, hey, check out this thing I made or invite some friends over to play a co-op game I made and be like, hey, play this thing I made and actually see people enjoying that thing that I was making. And that feeling I feel like drives you further to want to make and finish more games as opposed to the feeling of like, someday someone will play this game and someday someone will like this game. Now, because I'm also kind of insane, I took that one game a month strategy and I rolled it into doing one game a week, which popped out around the time I started making video games, where the idea was to make even smaller games, even faster and finish them in one week. Now I had a full-time job, so I just worked on it for like an hour or two a night after work. And I would just try to get a couple of small things done to create really, really, really small games but that helps snowball me even more to keep leveling up, keep leveling up, keep leveling up and finishing more games. All right, so on the context of one game a month, one game a week and finishing your games, tip number five is join a game jam. I love game jams because there's a sense of community. There's a sense of getting to know new people, but also a sense of taking yourself out of your comfort zone of having to not only finish something in a month or a week, but finishing something in like 48 hours, which is so, so, so much pressure, but also so exciting because again, it forces you to make your ideas smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So they're actually attainable and it forces you to actually finish a project because when the game jam is over, your goal is to have just something done and playable, which I know I keep going back to in this video, but I think it's such an important part of growing your ability to succeed. In fact, all of the games that I commercially released actually came out of game jams. So my first game, Skyhook, which was a 2D platformer where you fight with grappling hooks, was actually made at a 48 hour game jam in New York City where I came up with this game idea called Hook City, where two people fought with grappling hooks. And it was very different from the actual Steam game where you couldn't actually move, you just shot grappling hooks in different directions or whatever. And that premise and that idea and that hook uh, basically helped me come up with the idea for what I wanted to pursue for a full game that I then spent two years on. Shotgun Farmer similarly, which is currently my entire life, uh, came out of a seven day game jam that I did on Twitch, where the goal was to start and finish a game in one week. And in doing that, I accidentally found this mechanic and idea that was super strong and super exciting and then spent the next five years on. And if you're someone who works really well on a team, a game jam is a great place to meet other coders, other artists, other uh, musicians, other designers, uh, but if you're someone who also likes working on your own games and doing it entirely yourself, which is totally understandable, then it's also a great place to force yourself to kind of meet all the other things we talked about in this video, to have a deadline, to scope your ideas smaller, to use tools that you may not have used before. And most important of all, it tries to get you to finish a game. And I think that really brings me to the ultimate tip in this video. I know it sounds kind of silly to say, but the best way to become a game developer is to finish a game. And that's, that sounds dumb, but it's the simplest thing because what I did for a long time when I was starting out was I watched video after video, I sketched out idea after idea, I thought about what it would be like or what my games would be like or what the future would be like when my games were done people were playing them. But I wasn't finishing games, I was just making something, abandoning it. Starting something, abandoning it. Making something else, abandoning it. And I know a lot of people kind of follow that path when they start out. And it's just, it's so hard to pull yourself out of it, but you're the only one who can. And so hopefully some of these tips in the video will give you the tools you need to kind of get out of that 
safe spot of not finishing your game and the really, really scary part of having to get it out there and have people play it and have people leave you reviews. All right, before we go, I wanna give one more bonus tip and that is it's time to stop following tutorials. I love tutorials, so don't take this the wrong way. My entire career has been built off of tutorials on YouTube. I learned all my game engines, 3D programs, uh, everything I know how to make video games, I learned from watching YouTube videos and videos on other sites. Tutorials are amazing, and they're the best way, I think, to teach yourself to make video games. I feel like there's this space where after you've done a lot of tutorials and learned a lot about your tools and how to make video games, where you kind of can get stuck and I was stuck there for a long time where I just kept doing more tutorials on different genres and different game types and following more YouTube videos instead of trying to create something of my own because it's kind of scary. It's scary not having anyone to tell you what to do or like where to start, which is why if you look back at your past week or month and see that you've just been doing a lot of different tutorials about how to make video games, I wanna motivate you to try to take some of those tools and ideas and resources that you've learned, start a fresh project, no tutorial, no guides, Try to remember some of the things you learn. Obviously look them up and grab little scripts and stuff from that here and there and just make something. It doesn't have to be your dream game. Don't feel like you're compromising. It's just a random project that you're gonna start and make in a short period of time. It, it can be tic-tac-toe, it can just be Pac-Man, it can just be about like frogs that fight with tongues for grappling hooks. That could actually work. But just start that thing, give yourself a deadline. Don't feel like you have to follow a tutorial to make it and just use the resources and knowledge that you know. And I know it's easier said than done, but just finish that small project, show it to your friend, show it to your roommate, show it to your mom, and I promise that feeling of finishing your first game will change you forever. All right, so those are my top five, or I guess five and a half tips for becoming a game developer. And I know you might've heard some of them already, but I think it's so important to reiterate those things, to really ingrain them in you, to try to get you out of your comfort zone and get you to make video games. If any of these tips were useful to you, please hit that like button below. And of course, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to get notifications. All right, I'll see you in the next one.